All right, folks, here we are in the Markworth State Forest, and we are looking at a sale area that was just harvested this past winter. And uh, we're gonna go take a look at a couple things here, uh, mostly the road abandonment, and look at how um, we manage streams uh, on, on secondary and tertiary roads like these that are into the units and uh, and how we abandon um, temporary culverts that we put in uh, during these types of projects so that we can reopen the, the stream and, um, and have it be a more natural flowing stream and uh, it's much better for water quality and fish and uh, all kinds of things. Um, so we try and practice that. Uh, we do have kind of a fresh road cut here, which um, is pretty typical soils here in the Markworth, at least at this elevation. Um, we are pretty similar elevation to where we were uh, a while ago over in the southern end of this forest at the 16 penny harvest. And I'll just point out here before we get trucking up the road here, you can see this lens of material right along the ditch line here is um, compacted material. Um, that's different than this um, much gravelier or sandy material. You can see here it's our, look at that, classic compacted glacial till it's everywhere um so that lens goes all the way up this ditch line here and as you can see there's some areas where it's slumped out off because of that um again the uh landslide issue of um sandy or gravelly material on top of a compacted glacial till layer <clears throat> gives you uh, uh the perfect recipe for for a slide in here what we've done is put these uh root wads in here so that um will prevent people from driving back here and also uh, mucking up the streams and uh that's our main goal here is uh, to look at how uh, we abandon road and, uh, and the reasons we do that for mainly water quality and fish habitat. All right, folks, um, we have walked up uh, quite a bit here, probably 80 vertical feet or so from where the truck was parked at where we started there at the bottom of the road here. And I just wanted to stop and point out a couple of things about these water bars <clears throat> that we have put in here. And the reason we put them in is to basically uh, reduce the amount of energy that this water is going to to build as it goes down this ditch here over time. You know, this keeps winding up and around and it flattens off there and starts going down into a, a stream uh, ravine area. But we have, oh, you know, a thousand or more feet of road here that has ditch on it that is gonna carry a lot of water, especially in the winter and a winter like we just had this winter. and if you can imagine if we just had one of these water bars um, down at the bottom, it would get um, eroded quite massively along with the ditches would continue to get eroded. The more and more energy that water picks up, the more and more vertical feet it drops. And so our rule of thumb here is that about every 10 vertical feet that we go up, we put in a water bar 
These are non-drivable water bars. We do have water bars that are drivable that are just little um, kind of uh, 25 degree angle um, or 45 degree angle, excuse me, um, uh, um, little dips in the road that will help, uh, you know, get the surface. We're, we're worried here about the surface water on this road as well as the ditch. We don't want, again, a thousand feet uh, with, you know, a um, hundred or 200 feet of vertical drop in a road, which is about what we've got here. Um, we don't want all that energy and that water just gliding down this road here. Otherwise the road turns into a river basically. And that's definitely what we do not want. It's not good for uh, fish habitat, for water quality. Um, and it's not good for our roads either, but mainly uh, fish and, and sediment delivery is what we're trying to reduce here, as well as protect the road. You can kind of see in the road cut here, this is a rare opportunity to get a fresh road cut like this. You can see it's got surfacing material um, on it. This is like a cross section here of the road. Uh, you can see the four inch or so, a little bit smaller material. And then you can see it's, this one has a lot of natural material in it. In fact, you can even see it looks like some buried root um, <clears throat> over there on the, the right hand side. And then it gets into the ballast material below that, um, which then eventually ends up at some point hitting uh, the compacted glacial till material that is about at the ditch line here. Here's some that's on the side of the road. Not as hard as, as others, but you can see how that material um, is not going to let water uh, percolate through. And there's uh, some compacted glacial till down here in this ditch. So we're going to go up a little bit further here and take a look at a major stream that has had uh, the culvert pulled out of it.